everybody, my name is Jennifer Perez. I really appreciate you guys having me on today. I have some exciting things to share with you. Hopefully you can get some nuggets and tips to take back to your business. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I have a little PowerPoint for y'all. So give me a thumbs up if you guys can see. Cool. All right, let me get this going here. So just to give you a little bit of background about me, um, I actually have about nine years experience as a bookkeeper. And six years ago, I decided, hey, let's start a business. Um, my then financial coach or financial advisor actually recommended it. He said, let's go ahead and be a uh, personal financial coach. I'm like, great, what's that? <laughs> and so I've always had the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, I loved helping people with budgeting and spreadsheets and paying off their debts, et cetera. But after about a year of not knowing how to run a business, uh, people found out I knew bookkeeping. So started sending business my way. And I thought, well, hey, well, what if I started focusing on that instead? Um, so I did. And I invested into my time in business uh, doing that after a few years of growing. I had the question of how much should I pay myself? So I don't know if you've ever had that question or wondering if you're paying yourself the right amount. And everybody told me to read this book called Profit First. Well, my reaction was, I have a list of books I'm supposed to be reading. Can't I just get an answer? <laughs> and nobody would give it to me. So I did. I read the book in two days. Um, it is a cash flow method that I implemented immediately in my business. And after only three months, realized what it was doing for my business. And I thought, holy cow, this is awesome. What if I can take this and help my clients do this as well? So kind of fast track about two years ago, of course, during COVID 2020, I realized that that's where my heart and passion is. I love helping people financially. And yes, bookkeeping is a need in business, but it just felt like I was doing more data entry and I wasn't really helping them grow. I wanted to focus on that coaching piece. So um, I let go of all my bookkeeping clients and then have since then focused on the coaching, became certified as a profit first professional in that methodology. And now I can take those learnings and share it with you, you all and um, all of my clients coming forward. So that's my background about me, how I kind of got into this been part of Master Networks for over three years now. And some of you, I don't know, show of hands, how many saw I did a breakout session at Connect this year as well. So if you were there, you might see a little bit of um, similarity of what I covered then, but I noticed not a lot of familiar faces, which is good for me because then I hopefully can teach you guys something. So a lot of times people are like, well, what is a profit strategist? Like you understand the word profit and strategy, but what exactly does that mean? So 83% of small businesses operate check to check. And really what that means is you get paid, you spend the money. You get paid, you spend the money. Instead of you get paid, you spend some of the money and making sure that there's profit in your business because really profit is what's going to show people if you're financially healthy. And depending on what your exit strategies are or what your goals are in business, that is a huge factor in it. So I help people really do many, many things in their business to maximize profit, whether it's looking at pricing, your expenses, um, looking at your um, systems and processes, time management, all of those things have a factor in maximizing that profit so we can grow. So I wanted to introduce you guys to a concept. You guys might be familiar with this, um, but there's a gap accounting principle of sales minus your expenses, expenses and what's left over is your profit. The problem with this is unless you are an accountant, you know, CPA, what you're in the accounting realm, you probably don't understand financial statements or you might understand it, but not sure how to take it back into your business. So what that does, though, is it doesn't affect the human behavior, what we do when we make financial decisions and we're not in that industry. Right. So what we do instead to kind of help factor in that human behavior of understanding our numbers, we decide to take profit first. So when you get paid, you're actually going to put money aside for profit. And then what's left over, you have to spend on your expenses. And one rule of thumb I always tell everybody, if you do nothing else I ever tell you, open up a second bank account, nickname it profit, and start putting 1% into that account. If you get paid $100, that's the dollar. If you get paid $1,000, that's $10. It really is not that much when you look at the numbers. So just put 1% and you're gonna start driving profit intentionally the moment you start doing that, okay? So with this concept called profit first, the human behavior factor I was talking about earlier is what I like to call bank balance accounting. How many of you guys go to your bank account to go see what your balance is? Okay, I have 
something marketing coming up? Can I afford to do it? Can I afford to hire someone? Oh, should I buy this or that? So we go to our bank accounts to see whether we make those decisions or not. And that's bank balance accounting. But we really should understand and read our financial statements, our P&L or cash flow or um, income statement, your balance sheet, et cetera. But most of us probably don't understand it. Or if we do, we still don't go there to try and figure out how to make the decisions from it, right? And so that's why we decided to do this method called profit first, because it doesn't keep you from that habit of checking your bank account. Instead, you can continue doing that and have better, make better financial decisions for your business. But earlier I mentioned how um, when you start making money, you spend it and you make more and you spend it versus some of it. That's part of what Parkinson's law is. Now, Parkinson's law, I like to give this toothpaste analogy. Is, Jennifer, you got, uh, you asked for a five minute yeah. warning. Awesome. Thank you. So um, when you have a brand new tube of toothpaste, you just lather that on your tooth, your toothbrush, you brush your teeth, you're good. But what happens when you get to the end of the tube? You are at the point where you have to use two thumbs just to squeeze that little turtle head of the toothpaste, right? That comes out of the tube. But even though it's like this much compared to you lathering it on, it's enough for you to successfully brush your teeth and feel confident about that. So why do we use so much at the beginning when there's so much available, when there's a little available and we're still okay using that little bit? That's Parkinson's law. And that can be used in both money and time. So with all of these, a lot of it comes with your habits, your mentality, and, and doing that. So with Profit First, it's really using the envelope system, but with bank accounts. And because of time, I'm not going to go into the details of all of that. Um, sometimes I'll do webinar speaking engagements. My clients go through the whole process. But if you do that, just that one, and start getting into that habit of creating that one bank account, call it Profit. So seriously, that will change how you start thinking about money in your business. So when it comes to business finances, I just, I'm not going to go all, all of this in detail, but a lot of businesses, they commingle their bank accounts. First of all, if you are doing that, please stop, go get a second bank account. Um, if it's, whether it's business or personal, doesn't really matter. I mean, they prefer business, but sometimes it's easier to get it personal. Just make sure they're separate. You need to treat it like a business and have all of your business finances together, separate from your personal finances. Um, and so you really from that, you also need to have some sort of tracking in place, right? So I'm gonna skip on to here. This is actually a, a new program I created called Path to Profit. And this is our five-step process. You first need to separate your banking. After that, we need to start tracking your numbers. So a lot of times people refer this to bookkeeping, um, but sometimes maybe you don't have the funds yet to do so, or you're not really sure what bookkeeper to who to hire or how, what to look for in a bookkeeper, things like that. So those are things we help with, but also, uh, there's make a spreadsheet, at least something that you can be doing to track your numbers and know what's going on in your business. From there, now that we have those numbers, we can create this cash flow system and put those things in place to ultimately go to steps four and five, which is develop those growth strategies and ultimately build wealth. Take that profit and go to Kip, for example, and he can help you in ways that you can, can grow with that, right? Um, so this Path to Profit program, I just wanted to give you a shout out real quick. It is a group membership program. I'm not going to go into all the details. It actually includes a business tracking spreadsheet, which is basically an income statement in a spreadsheet form. Um, and then, of course, monthly coaching and content whatsoever in that. So if you guys are interested in that, feel free to reach out to me afterwards. But my goal is to really educate. I love speaking. I love educating businesses. Honestly, especially if you're newer in business, you don't know what you don't know. And I had to wait until about three years into my business before I had the question of how much should I pay myself? And then I read a book and then I started doing things. Well, if I learned all of that in year one, I'd be much further along in business than I am today. And so the best time to get started was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. I don't remember who, did, who had that quote, but I love it. And it's, I, I, you just need to start things now. Even if you don't think you are, have that much in income, better start now. Then later and come back two, three, five years later and having these financial struggles. So this path to profit, if you want more information, there is a QR code or you can go to my website, jenniferperezinc.com slash path to profit. Um, register for early bird. There's no contracts month to month. Just want to throw that out there. And um, after that, I just wanted to kind of open the room up for questions. If you guys, I know we only had 10 minutes and I can do things in 10 minutes. I can do things in three days. So there's so many different things that we can cover, but I wanted to make sure I had time for you guys to ask questions. 
Do we have any questions? Um, you can raise your virtual hand or physical hand. Uh, Kip. Uh, yeah. Hey, thanks very much, Jennifer. That was fantastic. Um, how early in the business process do you get involved, like with this kind of thinking or process? You know, I say I start a business today. When do I start thinking this way? Today. Today. And because um, a lot of times people don't, they're like, oh, I just need to bring in this. I mean, yes, you need some income. You need to start bringing sales in. But at the same time, if you had some of the basics in mind, if you made sure you had your separate banking set up as soon as you opened a business, if you made sure that you had systems in place to track your numbers, if you just started putting profit aside from day one, then you're always going to have a profitable business. So you just, some of these basic foundations that you need in place you, will go a long way if you start that today. Now, if you've already been in business for several years, definitely today, because more than likely you've also have some habits that we may need to kind of backtrack some, but it, it's day one. Great, uh, Dr. Jody. <clears throat> You're, You're on mute. Sorry about that. I had a question on setting the percent for your profit margin. Is there a simple formula if you've been in business for a while? And it, is the profit supposed to be what you're considering for part of your salary? Or like, how are you looking at that? So profit is, um, that's, I, there's, there can be a long answer to that question, to be honest. But to simplify it, in the example I set up where you put 1% of profit, that is money that you, that sets aside. Now, here's what you do with that profit. Um, I actually wrote a blog post on eight uses of profit so you can get into more detail of it. But ultimately you just set it aside. You don't touch it. You leave it there, you let it grow because every time you're getting paid, you're putting 1% into that. What you do is at the end of every quarter, however much is in that profit account, let's just say there's $500 in there. 250, 50% of that, needs to go set aside as a reserve or an emergency fund for your business. Because you need, I'm sure you've heard and personally you need it, you need an emergency fund for your business as well. Um, the other half, $250, goes to you as a profit distribution, kind of like a bonus. And the difference is that that profit distribution you need to use to reward yourself. We're business owners, we wear multiple hats, we deserve to get paid. So you take that $250 and do it to what, you know, put it towards whatever you want personally. Whether it's you want to go on a shopping spree, you want to put it towards a vacation, um, buy things for your kids, whatever makes you excited and, and rewarding yourself. So that's kind of the very basic answer to that. But that's before factoring in the pricing margin, et cetera. Um, the answer to your pricing margin really depends. That's kind of like a one on one, depending on your business, mm -hmm. what industry you're in, factoring in so many different things. Are you just reselling something? Are you um, building widgets and you have to factor in? The labor costs and things like that. So that's kind of a very open, broad um, answer, I guess, to your question. <laughs> okay, thank you. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, Tina. Yeah, that was that was awesome, uh, Jennifer. Um, but one of the things. So this is so interesting because how many times? Number one, do we hear? You know, people don't track their numbers, don't know their numbers, and then other people say, "Well, that's not a business; that's a hobby," right? That's one thing. And then just, but to be able, that's really cool to, to pay yourself at least that 1%. Like you said, if you immediately see that you have profit, it's also got, got to be also um, a great mindset uh, to change, kind of change your mindset. Because how many people are like, I don't even know what I got. Right. And the, cool. to take it further, you know, I didn't have time to go into the details of it. But you, after you start doing the profit, well, now you start setting money aside to pay yourself first. You put money aside to save to pay taxes because Uncle Sam wants his money. I know we don't like it, but <laughs> it's going to come anyway. So we want to make sure we're prepared for that. And then honestly, after all of that, taking care of ourselves, then what's left over is what we have to spend on the expenses of a business. And, and, and so, I know Noreen and Roger, really quick. So, so what you're saying doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur, correct? If you're an entrepreneur and you have, you know, working for someone else, you can still do this. Oh, yeah. You right, can do okay. this in your personal finances, too. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Noreen and Roger. Hey, Jennifer. Uh, just a quick question on that 50% say the, the 250 that you would reward yourself with, is that where the, such a thing as tithing would come out of or would that come out of the other 50%? Yes, yeah, so the first 50% goes into an emergency fund in your business. 
Right. Um, you might have a separate savings account for that, for example. The $250 for the profit distribution goes to your personal finances. So again, we're separating that. So if you're wanting to tithe personally, you can apply that towards tithing if that's reward, a reward to you in doing that. If you're wanting to tithe within your business, that's more of um, contribution and would be honestly part of operating expense. But um, that could be like a whole nother thing. So uh, it really is up to you on how you want to use those funds. That $250 is for you to spend however you please. Excellent. Thank Wonderful. you, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you for all the great questions. Um, we're going to wrap up. I'm going to um, pass over to um, Victor. Uh, Tina, if you want to, uh, well, actually, it, maybe just record this one thing. I'm going to give my testimonial for Jennifer. Um, Jennifer and I met through the mastery program of Master Networks. It's a, and we've um, developed a relationship over the last, what has it been, two, three years, Jennifer, I think at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm going through, I've went through a couple of Jennifer's courses. This last course that she has a profit mastery is really helping me. She's guiding me step by step. She gave me just, there was one of the many tools she gave me that helped me do something to determine whether my pricing was appropriate. It would have taken me countless hours and I probably would have made mathematical errors without this tool. I kid you not, Jennifer, how long did it take us? Less than a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and I was done. Like, so if you're, if you're really struggling, even if you're not struggling with your finances, just talk to Jennifer and let her tell you what to do and you'll be done. It's easy. So um, we can stop recording. That's my testimonial. We can lead right in. Um, Victor, 